Today I'm going to show you how to use automation to fix some pretty major audio recording problems. I'm working with a stereo live recording from a friend of mine. It's taken from a field recorder, set up in a room, and the recording has three major problems. First, the volume levels are all over the place, meaning some instruments are much louder than the others. Second, there are some nasty feedback tones in a few places. Third, the stereo field is completely unbalanced, so I'm guessing the mic placement was in a really bad spot. So first I'm going to level out the volume differences and I'm going to use volume automation to achieve this. You might be wondering why I'm using volume automation instead of a compressor to level out the volume. The reason is that a compressor will mess with the dynamic range and will create an audible difference between the loud parts and the quiet parts, doing permanent irreversible damage to the audio. I'm also planning to use compression during the final stage of mastering, so by getting everything leveled out manually now, I can ensure that it will pump into the mastering compression in a pleasant way. Whenever you do volume automation, you want to make sure that the changes are applied pre-FX stage, that is, before the volume gets processed by FX rather than afterwards. In Reaper, this also means that you can visibly see the waveform changing while you work, which can give you a good indication of what's happening. Next up is removing feedback tones. There are some pretty bad feedback tones in this recording. But the lovely thing about feedback is that it's very easy to EQ out since the sine wave tone occupies a single frequency in the audio spectrum. So I notched out the offending frequency with EQ and then I automate the wet and dry mix so that the effect fades in while the sine is getting louder and out when it gets quieter, removing the bulk of the offending tone. Next up is fixing the stereo field. Fixing the stereo field is a very complicated process and you can't always fix what's there. You can see in the waveform view that the left side is much louder than the right, but you can't just simply pan the mix slightly to the right to fix it as this only changes the volume. The human brain doesn't just listen to volume differences between the left and right ear. To figure out where a sound is coming from, it also takes notice of the minute time differences between when the sound reaches the left ear and the right ear. If you're working with an unbalanced recording, sometimes you can shift the left or right channel backwards or forwards by a few milliseconds so that your brain feels like it's hitting the respective ears with the correct timing. But in practice, most of the time there is sound coming from more than one static direction. And your ears can also hear how the room reverberates is affecting the sound in 3D space, making it a very complicated stereo signal. So you can reduce the effect of a bad stereo field, but rarely fix it entirely. My compromise is to make as many fixes to the stereo field as I can, and then live with that and just reduce the stereo width to hide the lack of balance. Once all of my corrections are done, I do my regular mastering process. I hope this gave you some insights to help fix your own botched recordings. That's everything I wanted to talk about today, so thanks for watching.